to talk a little bit about jazz articulation. Now, articulation plays an extremely important role in distinguishing the style of jazz music. Articulation simply means the way that you tongue, slur, and accent individual notes. Now, most people begin playing music by studying a classical method in which the notes are articulated very evenly. In jazz, articulation is a departure from this classical approach. By implementing the feel of swing, tongue slur combinations, and cross accents, we create the uneven feel that is desirable in jazz music. Let's explore some of the jazz articulations and learn how to apply them in practice and in performance. Now, an easy way to start to get a feel for jazz articulation is to first start off with uh, the plain Jane classical approach in terms of playing all the notes evenly, and then to, little by little, add the ingredients, uh, which we're going to go over, which will help you to start getting that more authentic jazz articulation and feel. Um, so just an example of, of a straight classical approach to playing, say, a scale, a C major scale, would be articulating all of the notes exactly the same and having an even approach from note to note in terms of sound, dynamics, etc. <laughs> classical music, this is the, the general approach, uh, unless otherwise indicated in the music. You're always going to play everything nice and even. For example, um, in this song. Or something a little bit more complex, like, say, uh, the triple tongue variation from Arben's Carnival of Venice. Now, in all three of these examples, I tried to play everything as evenly as possible. But in jazz, since it's a departure from that, that even uh, way of playing, we're going to start adding in different things which set jazz articulation apart, because it really is a different way of articulating than in classical music. And when you hear players play and they're not quite sounding like they're grooving and they're not, they don't really sound like, like skilled jazz musicians, seasoned players, I bet part of the problem is that they're not articulating right. They, they might still be doing some things in more of a classical manner. Now, one of the things uh, right off the bat is the swing feel. Um, if, but that's not enough in itself. But if we were to just play a C major scale and implement the, sing, the swing feel into that scale, we're already getting somewhere in terms of getting to that jazz articulation. So let's play that C major scale one more time. Uh, hear me play that, but I'm going to put a swing feel, which is based on triplets. Triple let, triple let, triple let, triple let, do, de, do, de, do, de, do, de, do, right? So we're going to do that, but put that into the uh, C major scale. But I'm going to keep everything weighted evenly and articulated evenly. <laughs> Here, what I'm doing is I'm changing the rhythm, but I'm pretty much still keeping the notes even. Now, if we were to change the weight, now make the second note, uh, the, each, if we think of these in groups of, of two notes, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and if we give the second note more weight and the first uh, note less weight, that's going to add to the feel. It's going to make uh, it's going to make the line move forward more. It's going to give it more of a of a swing feel. Check it out. Now, another way that we can make this even more swinging is to do what we call a, a slur tongue combination. So instead of tonguing every note, da, 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 we do da, 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 da. So we start tonguing and then we slur and then tongue and then slur. Something like this. And if we speed that up, it sounds more like this. Now, my band director, I was very fortunate, my jazz band, he used to have us go through these scales every day, all of our major scales. Sometimes we do the minor scales too, and we played them at different tempos. He might call off a C major uh, scale 
And, and how about you just do it right about here? One, a two, a one, mm, mm. <laughs> And then he might call off a D major scale and call it about here. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. And by doing this, by practicing all the scales with that type of articulation, you're getting a lot closer to, to what it is to articulate in terms of jazz articulation. So we used to practice those scales and arpeggios uh, every day in band. And uh, on my own, I started to realize that as a trumpet player, when doing certain things, especially like arpeggios, you have to really be cognizant of the note that you're going to because it can be, it can be difficult sometimes when you're doing a line and you're going up to that top note. You really got to know the note that you're going to, right? So when I'm playing that line, if I'm playing um, even just a C arpeggio, all right, if I'm playing it with those chromatic passing tones, we're doing the slur two, tongue two, I'm thinking of that high C because that's the last note that I'm hitting. Or if I'm doing, say, a G7 chord and I just want to go, right, but I want to hit that F, I'm not thinking of every note in that, in that chord necessarily, but I'm really thinking of a line going straight to that F. And the chances of missing that top note are a lot uh, slimmer if you're thinking of just the last note you're going to instead of every single note. And you just got to direct that air all the way to that end note. And that should help you out with these arpeggios. So practice your scales and practice your arpeggios using the swing feel, using a slur two, tongue two combinations, and using, uh, you know, different weights on the notes. And this doesn't have to always be uh, just as that prescribed same manner going... <laughs> You can also do something we call cross accents, whereas uh, the accents aren't, aren't every other note, but they can be um, pretty much anywhere that you want them to be. So like this. So, you know, I change the scale up a little bit, but then instead of just doing them very regularly, I try to do them sporadically. Now, uh, that's getting us even closer to what you might be doing when you're playing in an actual improvised solo.